What's up guys, Chris Dallasay here. In our sixth video of our Unity 3D Beginner series, we're continuing from our last video where we had created our consumable objects, we showed you how to rotate them, and we added a rigid body to our gems to account for the Unity Physics Engine optimization. And now in this video, I wanna show you guys how we're gonna actually pick up the gems, make them disappear when we do pick them up, and add to a variable that we're gonna call count. So I think for the disappearing act of the gems, when we pick them up, I think we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did with the player when we hid them in the previous video. So I have the gem selected here just in front of the player. And so when it's out there, it'll be active. And when the player consumes it, we'll go ahead and set is active to false and add to our count variable, which in essence will be our score. So let's go ahead and re-add that. And this is all gonna be done in the code this time around. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's collapse this. Control S to save. And we're gonna go ahead and go back into our player controller. And in our player controller, we're going to go ahead and add a new private variable for the score or for how many gems we've picked up. It's gonna be private. And it's gonna be a whole number because you can't pick up a half of a gem, for instance. So we'll go ahead and go int as the variable type. And this will be called count. And then in the start method, we're gonna initialize count to zero. And now I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you guys to a new event function. This one is called onTriggerEnter. We're gonna go ahead and go, we're gonna say void onTriggerEnter. And onTriggerEnter requires a collider object, and we'll lowercase collider for the variable name open brackets and close brackets. So all this is is when a collider with a trigger collides with our player object, then this will get invoked. And we'll know what the collider is because we'll have that exact collider object being passed into the function. And this function will make more sense as we go along here. In the function, we're gonna go ahead and I'll we'll put a comment here, check if the collider is of tag Gem. Now we haven't really touched on tags yet, just really quick going back to our editor. When we look at a prefab or a game object, we can see right under the name there's something called tag. Now I won't go into all of the functionality that a tag provides you when you tag a game object or a prefab, but I will explain the reasoning behind using a tag in this case. In our case, we're going to use the tag of gem to check if the object that collided with our player is in fact a gem. So for the gem prefab, we'll go ahead and click in the tag dropdown. You notice there's some pre-built ones called player, main camera. We're gonna go ahead and add a tag. And in the tags dropdown, you'll see our list is empty. You can add one. We'll call it gem with a capital G and save. We'll go ahead and tag our gem gem tag and we can see that our gems are now tagged as such going control s for save so in the code we're going to check a collider is of tag gem so the way we check is with an if statement we're going to say if and it's a conditional statement so we're going to say if the collider that we're that's being passed in game object dot compare tag now compare tag takes in a string tag that checks to see if the string passed in is a tag that matches the collider's tag we're going to say compare tag we called ours gem so if the collider's tag is gem we step into the if statement. We're going to go ahead and say collider dot game object dot set active. Remember, this is how we're going to make it disappear. Is false. And we're going to go to count and we're going to increment it by one. We can say count equals count plus one or shorthand, 
the same exact thing as this is count plus plus, which is the same exact thing. So we're incrementing by one. And we're going to do one more thing. Since we don't have any UI components on screen to show us the score yet, we're going to use the editor's console. To go ahead and output the score. Now we haven't used the console yet, but I'll show you how it works. We're going to create a debug statement dot log. We're going to log this to the console. Open friends and the message is going to be gem count is colon space the count number. We'll close that. Great. So now that we have this, anytime we collide with a gem, anytime we collide with an object tagged as gem, it'll be set active to false. We'll increment our count and we'll log to the console what the new gem count is. So control S to save, go back to our game. Great. So now before we hit play here in Unity, we need to do a couple things for our gem prefab. We need to make sure that is trigger is selected on box collider. Now we're selecting is trigger here because our gems are a kinematic object. We're not dealing with forces here. And we want the gems to invoke our on trigger enter method call here. So we have to make sure is trigger is selected here. And then let's go ahead and open up the console, which is right next to the project tab. This will probably be down here in this panel for you but we'll open up the console tab so that we can see our score update. When a game object goes inactive, the lettering of the name will go gray. Let's go ahead and set this gem to inactive. And you can see the lettering, maybe not on my screen as well, but on your screen, that the lettering is gray. Go ahead and turn that back active. And so you'll be able to see these turn gray as we pick them up. And then down here, you'll be able to see the debug statements that we set up. It'll say our count incremented by one each time that we pick up a gem. Let's go ahead and hit play. Let's go ahead and pick that up. You can see our debug statement, gem count is one. The first gem is grayed. Second one, gem count is two. So on and so forth. Three, four, so on and so forth. Great, every time we pick one up, we see our score increment, and we see the various gems go inactive. Go ahead and stop it there. Perfect, so I think that's everything I wanted to show you in this video. For our next video, I wanted to actually step into our first UI segment. For our purposes, working in Unity, this console is a good first step in showing us our score. You see that last game we got up to nine. What we're accustomed to in playing games is kind of a HUD look of some kind of score indicator within our game window that shows our accumulated score. So for the next video, we're going to work on that, showing the player on the actual game screen their score. Thanks guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please follow the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, like the video, and go ahead and leave us a comment below. And we'll see you guys next time.